Hey everyone, Dalton here. In this video, we're going to react to some TikToks and YouTube videos of people getting laid off at Google. So I just wanted to try something a little bit different and entertain you guys a little bit here. So enjoy the video. Make sure you hit like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you want to see this content because this is really fun to record. And yeah, let's get right into the video and we'll start with uh, the OG that has set it off, which was Nicole Sai vlogging about her day in the life working at Google LA. We're going to react to it. We're going to give our opinions right from the uh, get-go. So let's get right into it. In my life working from the Google LA office, I get up pretty early because typically my first meeting is around 7 a.m. on so do I. Tuesday through Thursdays. It's way too early to go to the office, so I do usually take these morning meetings from home. Then I'll respond to some emails before jumping in the car to head to the LA office. So, so far, she's had a meeting, and she's uh, basically answered some emails. So that's essentially what she's done today. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the thing is, I look at all these videos, and it doesn't look like they're doing any actual work. Like, what actual work is getting done in these videos, right? It's just kind of mind-boggling to me. And uh, when you watch these videos, you're, you it's hard to feel sympathy for these people because, like, what actual value did you provide to the company? You know what I mean? Office. I don't know if you've ever experienced LA traffic, but it takes me about an hour to get here, even when I leave around 10 a.m. And now that I've arrived... Oh, I know LA traffic very, very well safely i'm going to take another meeting from the zero gravity room this is one of my favorite rooms just because it's so unique and it looks like everything is floating and it's who cares it's just a meeting room such a great icebreaker then i'll head next door and do a little bit of work from the peter pan room you can even see peter who cares Peter pan shadow but personally my manager thinks this room is a little creepy then i'll just head upstairs to grab a quick lunch today i just had some noodles and i'll just grab a snack then head over to a room called the so essentially her day's been meeting, reading emails, responding to emails, getting food, eating food. And that's really the problem that I have with these whole day in the life videos is they never show you actually doing any work. They only show like the parts of eating. And while that can be nice, it's like it doesn't tell the entire story because I have worked at big tech companies. Like I worked at Survey Monkey for a year and you know, Yes, you do have free food. Yes, you do have these really cool meeting rooms, but no one actually ever uses it. And when you see these TikToks, you're like, oh, everyone's in the meeting room and shit. And it's just not the reality, right? And that's really what I want to tell you guys here. It's just not the truth. The library to just sit down and do a little bit of work. There are some books in here. What work? Here, though I've never seen anyone read them, but it's just a nice quiet space. Then I headed over to the top floor to go to the speakeasy. This is just a space where they host happy hours. Back in the day before this was a Google. Okay, here's the thing about happy hours. The only reason they have happy hours is to get you to stay at the office longer. Because think about it. On a Friday night, when you drink, you can't drive home. It's irresponsible. Right? So what are you going to do? You're going to stay at the office longer while you get yourself sober. Right? And that gets you to work longer. That's the only reason why they have these like happy hours at these like tech companies, right? Google office, it was actually an aircraft hangar owned by Howard Hughes. So they put this speakeasy here in order to commemorate the original one. Then I wrapped up my day by playing a game and then headed home. And that was a day in All right, now she's talking about her day in the life getting laid off at Google. In my life getting laid off at Google. So I woke up to this really ominous text from my boss and I honestly had no idea what it was going to be about. So I called her the minute I woke up and saw this and she told me to check the news and my email. So I rushed downstairs to find out that I had lost access to basically everything. I couldn't log into my email or even check my calendar. I called my boss back and we just sobbed over the phone because she was also finding out about my layoff for the first time today. I don't know, man. Like, I wouldn't be this emotional if I got laid off. I don't know. I I guess you could say I'm a little bit robotic, but I'd be thinking like, how am I going to pay my bills? No. What, what am I going to do to create income? Right? I wouldn't be on the phone with my manager, no matter how good of a relationship I have with them. I'd be like, yo, dude, how am I going to pay my fucking bills? And the worst part is she's crying on camera, right? It's just, I don't know. I just, it doesn't give me a good feeling about it. Today too. I started getting calls from a bunch of my coworkers. 
right, so let's read the messages. Finding out who else was let go on my team and like, why wouldn't you cut underperformance in teams where the work wasn't impactful? The irony of this. I mean, you take a look at her videos and you take a look at this text message. It's like teams where the work wasn't impactful. Like the last video, you showed yourself attending a meeting, reading an email, and then driving to work and lollygagging through a bunch of fucking meeting rooms. And you wonder why your work isn't impactful. Like the irony in this message. Some neighboring teams as well. But I think the worst part is that it seems like no one was consulted on this decision. Dude, why would they consult workers on the decision? Decision, And everyone was just finding out about the layoffs at the same time. It just felt like a really bad game of Russian roulette and there was no consistency around. Hold on, hold on. At the same time. It just felt like a really bad game of Russian you're such a high performer, it doesn't make any sense. Russian roulette, and there was None of this does. Our team is so lean already. I mean, your team might be lean, but at the same time, your, your division might not actually be crucial to the bottom line of the company, right? It doesn't matter if the team is lean, right? What matters is they have a lot of bloat in the company that they need to get rid of. So they're going to get rid of the side projects. They're going to get rid of the people that cost too much. They're going to get rid of the added weight. So you have to take that into consideration. It's like, these people, I get it, they're emotional, they're in the moment, but that's something you want to keep in mind, right? There's no consistency around who was let go. It was also not performance based so it just felt really random i opened up linkedin which honestly was not great for my mental health there were so many people who were in the same so there's actually that something i was missing here let's see team and some neighboring teams as well but i think the worst part is that it seems like no one was consulted on this decision and so she said no one was consulted about this decision but i beg to differ because i can bet you that this was consulted within closed doors with the executive teams, they're like, hey, we're not making too much, uh, we're, we have too much cost and we don't have enough profit. Our ad rates are down, so we need to find a way to reduce our expenditures, right? So they're like, oh, what's the most expensive one? Staff, you know, what are the ones that are not mission critical to the business? So I can assure you that people were consulted on this decision. Everyone was just finding out about the layoffs at the same time. It just felt like a really bad game of Russian roulette and there was no consistency around who was let go. It was also not performance based, so it just felt really random. I opened up LinkedIn, which honestly was not great for my mental health. There were so many. I mean, when you get laid off, the worst thing you could do is to go on social media and find information about it because social media is just going to make you more negative. Like for me, I only use LinkedIn because I'm trying to find a job, not because I want to interact with people on social media like that, right? People who were in the same boat that were both equally as shocked and blindsided, but it did help me feel a little less alone. Honestly, I spent so much of the day crying. Let's see. So this is our post, actually. So let me go back. Blindsided, but it did help me feel a little less alone. So she's a partner services program manager at Google. So let's quickly go over and let's search what a program manager does. Program execution, managing project interdependencies. So yeah, you know, the big company like this, a program manager is necessary, but you can see why this is not like mission critical for a business like this, right? That's something to keep in mind. You gotta make sure that you're Whatever you're doing is actually mission critical for your business, right? Oh, honestly, I spent so much of the day crying that I just felt so tired from being sad and wanted to do something that would just make me feel better. Luckily, I have an annual pass, so I headed over to Disneyland because I wanted to go eat my- Bro, like if you get laid off, the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think of is going to fucking Disneyland, right? The first thing is, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to find another job, right? Like, why would you go to Disneyland? This is like the behavior of, a, of an overgrown child. Like, this is the problem with these TikToks is like, these people are basically like overgrown children and they only show the highlights of uh, the job. Like, where's the, where's the times where your project is running behind and it's got to get on schedule? 
where's the times where you got to work overtime because you're behind on a project? Like, where is that part of the day in my life? Of course, that's not interesting, so that's why nobody watches it, but that's just something to keep in mind, right? My feelings. So I started off with a cinnamon galaxy churro and then went to the teriyaki turkey leg. This is a special limited edition item for the Lunar New Year celebration at Disney California Adventure. I had some rice crispy, a corn dog, did some drawing, and even had another. It's literally like an overgrown child. It's kind of funny. Churro. I don't really know what's next for me, but I'll be vlogging my journey and posting more content about it. So feel free to follow along. In my life working from All right, so that's the video. Uh, I want to keep this fairly short, but I enjoyed making this. And if you like this content, if you want to uh, see me react to more tech content, make sure you hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.